Hey, Sam here again. Woo! We're finally on to part five of my six part series on Market Samurai. And I mentioned sending you guys a bonus for getting this far into the series. So I've created some templates that I use that help me stay focused and on track with my content marketing goals. After I've created what I like to call my content schedule, I know exactly what I'm going to be writing about for the next month. And these templates are ones that I've never shared before and don't plan on posting them publicly online. So if you want these templates to use while building your site, head on over to my site at moneyjournal.com forward slash bonus and subscribe to my newsletter there. I'll send you over those templates as well as a full out guide on starting up an online business effectively and efficiently. Just so you know, I don't send spam or any sponsored ads through my newsletter. It's basically my way of communicating more intimately with people who I know are serious about building an online business. I send out my latest tested tips and tutorials and information that I think people like yourself would care about. I'm going to be using a couple of the templates in the next two videos, so if you want to pause the video and sign up, then please do. You should get an email with the bonuses as promised sooner than later. Just a quick recap. In my last video, I talked about a few different options to use your niche and keyword research to make money online. You probably have some great ideas of what you want to do, but how do you get people coming to your website? So if you're ready, let's dig deep into how you're going to get targeted traffic the quick way. Alrighty. In part two of this series, I hope I was able to get you comfortable with your way around the Market Samurai software. And we did some keyword research using the keyword phrase Market Samurai Tutorial and found some great keyword phrases that I'll be using on my Money Journal blog. Rather than micro-targeting something like Market Samurai, in this video we're going to choose a different niche and find different keyword opportunities to get traffic fast. We're going to use a really broad topic and a very popular one on the internet. And that one is celebrity gossip. I'm not into this myself, but it'll be a great example of how I use Market Samurai to get traffic quick. I've already pre-populated the data, but I'll run through exactly what I did for a quick 15 second refresher. So assuming my website is about celebrity gossip, I started a new project and typed my primary keyword phrase in as celebrity gossip. I went to the keyword research tool and chose a minimum phrase length of two words and a maximum of six. From here, I generated a list of other keywords using Market Samurai, which uses Google's data to populate these results. I took about one minute to filter through the results and added a few negative keywords like 3AM, BET, Bollywood, TMZ, UK, style, dresses, birthdays, and a bunch more. I also added a positive keyword, which was celebrity to make my niche a little more specific. I basically took the list down from 800 results to 260. I then clicked on keyword analysis, made sure that my filters had all of the organic filters on, all of the commerciality filters on, and the SEO competition filter on. I clicked on analyze keywords and voila, there was a plethora of information I could use to start planning my blogging schedule. Okay, so let's analyze the data. You can see that there are about 550,000 searches alone for the keyword phrase celebrity news followed by 301,000 on celebrity gossip. And as nice as it would be to have an authority site ranking in the top three of Google for these keyword phrases, it takes a lot more time to rank for these than phrases with lower SEO competition levels. If you're catching on, the way to get traffic to your website quick is by hitting lower competitive keyword phrases. These will usually have a lower volume of searches, but it gets people to your site, reading your content, and hopefully subscribing, buying something, sharing your site, or at the very least, remembering your site the next time they find you in Google. This is one of the single greatest methods of getting traffic to your site quick with minimal effort. And it took me about five minutes to generate these results, and I would have never known what to search for without Market Samurai. Rather than scrolling through all 282 results, as I go cross-eyed looking through this data, this is where filters are absolute money. The two filters we want to focus on the most are SEO traffic and SEO competition. 
Again, SEO traffic is 42% of the estimated monthly searches in Google each day, week, or month, depending on how you set up your report settings. I always use monthly. SEO competition is the number of index pages in Bing that use this specific keyword term in the same word order. These kinds of keywords are often referred to as long tail keyword phrases. And most of the authority sites you see today started with long tail and are actually continuing to dominate the long tail keyword phrases because they are continually building on them. Think about Wikipedia. Now with search traffic, it's all about cumulative value. You may rank great for the keyword phrase celebrity news and get a whole bunch of traffic, but when you compare it to a site that ranks for 30,000 long tail keyword phrases with monthly traffic between 30 visitors to 1,000, it really doesn't compare. Let's set up our long tail keyword filter. Generally, what I look for in a long tail keyword phrase is SEO traffic of about 30 visitors per month and an SEO competition of less than 10,000 pages to compete against. Some people choose SEO competition levels of less than 1,000, but I find that these results are scarce. So I'll set my SEO T to a minimum of 30 visitors, and then I'll set up my SEO C to a maximum of 10,000 pages. You can see that some of the SEO C values are set to zero, and it doesn't mean that there are zero other competing pages using this keyword phrase, but it simply means that somewhere along the search, data was lost. The same goes for the ones that haven't populated at all. Market Samurai has over 400,000 users as of January 2012, so the amount of requests that they sent to Google and Bing are ridiculous. And it's not the software itself that's preventing you from getting your results, but it's Google or Bing that is preventing that much data to be sent so quickly or timing out themselves. And all you have to do is reanalyze your keyword phrases and you should be good to go. Market Samurai knows this, and that's why they've left a link so you can check out the information yourself. So if we click on the arrow by Celebrity Blog, which is showing an SEO competition of zero, then your browser should open up Bing.com showing you the number of results on the page. You can see that there's about 637,000 results. Now moving back to using the software, I like to organize my SEO C in ascending order and the ones with zero I normally just open really quick to see what the competition is like. And if it's lower than my threshold then I like to keep it. And I can already tell that phrases like celebrity blog and celebrity stories will be well over my 10,000 threshold. Now you can see that there are a good 20 or so solid topics that get a decent amount of traffic that will be a lot easier to rank for than my original keyword phrase of celebrity gossip. You just need to make some killer content on this and engage with your audience. So the next time you're searching for long tail keyword phrase opportunities, you might want to keep the filters that we just set here. And Market Samurai lets you save custom filters like this one. All you have to do is click on the save button then you choose whether you want a new name or to overwrite an existing one. So for this one, I'll create a new one and set it as long tail search 30-10,000, which basically tells me that my SEO T is 30 and my SEO C is 10,000. You can always create more long tail filters if you find this one too aggressive or maybe you don't find it aggressive enough. And then after you're done all this, you just click the save button. Now onto organizing these keywords so you know exactly what to write about and when you should write about it. I'm going to export these results into a new folder which I'll call Celebrity Gossip. And I personally like to create another folder specifically for keyword research because I use it that often. And I'll type in my primary keyword, Celebrity Gossip, and hyphenate it with long tail keyword phrases. Now you just need to navigate to the folder where you save the file and open it. And from here, we'll filter down this list with the keyword phrases that I want to target for my new celebrity blog posts. And we'll first remove the ones that don't fit our criteria of 30-10,000, like celebrity blog, celebrity gallery, and whatever else just doesn't fit the criteria. 
And also, we'll remove the primary keyword phrase since that's not what we're exactly going for here. And now we have a list of over 20 keyword phrases that are going to make great pieces of content. So if we do a quick Excel function and you are able to rank as number one in Google for these keyword phrases, you're looking at getting about 1,753 new visitors in the month searching for these specific terms. And I'm not promising you that you're going to rank number one in Google for these keyword phrases and that these numbers are perfectly accurate, but it's a good ballpark range of what you can strive for. It's not just a matter of writing content, including keywords, and then reaping the benefits, but some, actually a lot of off-page SEO work like link building will help you get your results quicker. And I'm not going to get into link building in this series, but I'll be blogging about it on moneyjournal.com and sending out some tips to my newsletter subscribers on my website. If you haven't gone to my website and signed up for my newsletter yet, you may get lost here as I'll be using my own custom templates to filter through these words and set up a schedule of when and how I want to write these articles. And I'll let you pause the video and grab the free templates on my site right now at moneyjournal.com forward slash bonus. All right, so now that we have a decent amount of blog posts to write about and we know approximately how many people are searching for this specific keyword phrase in Google, we can begin setting up our schedule using the template that I set up for you. If you actually went ahead and signed up for my newsletter and confirmed your email address, you should have gotten an email from me with this template and a few others that are really going to help you structure your online business well. The one I want you to open up is contentschedule.xls. In this free template that I give to my subscribers, there's a quick overview of the worksheet. The part that you should pay attention to most is the before you use this template section. What you should have prepared before creating your content schedule is a domain that is hosted, know what your niche is, have a vision for your website, and be working towards that, and you should have completed some keyword research the way that I've shown you. If you haven't done all of these, then I'd recommend looking at my resources tab first. I have a direct link to some resources as well as my own how-to resource links that I've written about in my blog. It's basically a foolproof way to make sure that you're on track with your website development. Now we're on to our content schedule. Now using my exported file of long tail keyword phrases from Market Samurai, I can simply copy and paste the keywords and its data into my content schedule. So I'll filter down my Market Samurai export first to have the information that I have set up in my content schedule. So I'll be filtering it down to keyword, searches, SEO traffic, SEO competition, and the single CPC value. For each page or blog post that you create, you can target more than one long tail keyword phrase. I normally select these by grouping them. And there are three rules that I follow when grouping keywords together. My rule number one is group relevant content together. So I wouldn't want to group South African celebrity gossip and Miley Cyrus celebrity gossip since I don't see too much relevance in these together. But I might want to combine something like Nzanzi celebrity gossip and South African celebrity gossip because they are perfectly related. Rule number two. I generally like to target a higher competitive word with higher traffic as a primary keyword phrase and then another two or three long tail keyword phrases that have low competition value. In this case, I might want to target Celebrity Gossip USA, which has 480 monthly searches, but a competition level of 3000 with maybe Miley Cyrus Celebrity Gossip, which has a competition of 22 and latest on celebrity news, which has a competition of 14. But remember, they must be relevant, and when incorporating the keyword phrases into your writing, they should be used naturally. You don't want to write it just because it has traffic. And if it doesn't make sense, save it for a future post or ditch it completely. Rule number three. Keyword phrases are awesome and helpful, but please do not write only for the search engines. You have to remember that your primary target audience are actual human beings 
who are taking the time to read through your website. And search engine algorithms are getting more and more sophisticated. They know what you're talking about in your post. So rather than organizing through all of these, I'll show you an example of how I use the template to set up one or two posts. So if I have a celebrity gossip blog, I might want to use the keyword phrase, celebrity latest gossip news today, as a keyword phrase for my homepage instead of making a blog post about it. And it's highly related to what my homepage is all about. And it's just a matter of making a heading using the keyword phrase and adding it into my own on-page SEO for the homepage. So to make a note of that, I'll write it down in the ideas column, add keyword to home page after block two. Then I'll set a deadline date for that. Then there's the status column. You can see that there's a little drop down here where you can set the status to one of the following. Completed, late, working. Or you can just leave it blank. And the descriptions for these are up here, if you want to know exactly what they mean, but it's pretty self-explanatory. The reason why I added this column in here is to keep myself accountable to getting my work done on time. And if you're noticing that you're late all the time, maybe you're setting your timeline goals too aggressively. And you can always adjust them as you need to. So I'll set this one to working. Now let's take the Celebrity Gossip South Africa and Mzanzi Celebrity Gossip and combine them. The way that I do this is to create a new keyword and enter a simple formula. I'll copy and paste the first keyword, South African Celebrity Gossip, and then I'll edit that new cell and separate it with a comma and add Mzanzi Celebrity Gossip. Then I'll go to monthly searches and type in equals the cell where South African Celebrity Gossip is plus the column where Mzanzi Celebrity Gossip is. Then do a quick mental check to make sure that I copied them from the right cells. And now I'm going to click back on the cell where Excel added the information for me and just drag it across. So now I know that I can expect about 222 monthly visitors from this blog post with a competition of 1,313 pages in Bing. And the CPC figure won't be accurate now, but in this particular post, CPC is probably not my best monetization method. Now under ideas, I can say that I want to create a blog post about South African celebrity gossip with a focus on Mzanzi. Then I'll set a deadline and leave the column blank since I don't plan on starting this for a little while. And so from here, you should have a good idea as to what you should be writing about and start getting traffic quick to your website where competition is low. And that's it for part five of six of my Market Samurai series. And on part six, we're going to hit the bigger keyword phrases and I'll show you how to use them to realistically start ranking for more competitive keyword phrases. So let's get traffic both quick and slow. Now, if you thought this was a cool little trick, hit that like button down there. And I generally respond a lot faster on Facebook. So if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to hit me up on Facebook or leave a comment below. And I'll see you in part six, where we're going to talk about getting massive amounts of traffic slow, but it's massive amounts of traffic. Are you listening? Damn.